You're listening to the Unbelievers Podcast. There were several groups. One of the principal ones was the reptilians from the Iran complex. Without any exaggeration, it was like being on fire inside. Rats were in the inside. This stuff was in my mouth. It felt like it was 500 degrees. It was unbelievably hot. My first question would be, were you a member of the Church of Satan, a card-carrying member of the Church of Satan? I don't understand. There's always an argument for everything. You know, just because um, somebody can fake something doesn't necessarily Warren, we found a life form. And that's when I started shitting my pants. So, for the person who called, um, I am carrying an alien. An alien, alien baby, and we cover it right here, okay? Okay. Something is happening. What is it? That's the question. So, do UFOs exist? It depends on what you mean, exist. Star Wars, He-Man and the Master of the Universe, She-Ra, Princess of Power, Scooby-Doo, The Smurfs, G.I. Joe, Thundercats, Barbie, Black Star, Transformers, The Care Bears. These classic toys, cartoons, and films of the 1980s entertained a generation of children, but were these seemingly innocent kids' products secretly indoctrinating us into occultic practices? Well, according to one man, they were. Tonight, we discuss the research of Christian lecturer and author of the book Turmoil in the Toy Box, Phil Phillips, who after speaking with God made it his personal crusade to expose the satanic lore of pretty much all popular children's entertainment. Is Starseed all-powerful? Where does Skeletor live? Is E.T. a homosexual? Find out right here on the program. We continue to learn to unlearn everything you hope! Hello and welcome to the Unbelievers Podcast. I'm your host, Russ Ryan, and tonight I am joined by my co-host in California, Drea Mora. Hello, Drea. Hello, Russell. And in Washington, D.C., our code host, Jude Prestia. Hey, everybody. Oh, and what's this? In Ohio, Brendan Shea. Hey, all you sexy kids. Ooh, <laughs> yummy! <laughs> Made a well, choice on the kids there. <laughs> we're not we're not done yet. Speaking of kids on Long Island, <laughs> our soundboard engineer what? and producer Rob Oki. I'm, I'm, not, I'm no sheep guy, but I you know I could pick up a sheep. What's up, guys? <laughs> hey, hey Rob. So yeah, here we are, full house tonight. We got. All the all the coasts are here. We're all doing it. And uh, before we start, oh man, we got a, such a fun topic tonight. I want to ask you guys. Uh, I'll start with you, uh, Brendan. So you're not here that much, Brendan. What was your favorite toy growing up as a kid? He Man, Masters of the Universe. Oh, perfect. And what about you, Rob? What was your favorite toys? Uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I had that's a good a bunch of them. Yeah. Yeah, and what about you, Drea? What toys did you like? Oh, my God. Like, I had no idea he was going to see Ninja Turtles, but I was given the April O'Neil toy because I was a girl. But oh, she had a on. camera. It was fun. I liked it. That, that was one of my favorites. She is cool. She is cool. But you, they could have thrown you a couple of Leonardos or something. Uh, yeah. what a, but what about you, Jude? What was your favorite toy as a kid? Dude, uh, we used to play a lot of video games. So, like, my Super Nintendo, my... Uh, any or my 64 and oh dude i'm i'm drawing a blank on like my favorite like toy toy okay i yeah i didn't know that video game systems counted because that would be my answer no nah, well it, 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 you might probably have like good christmas memories if you ever got man i remember a oh my night. power ranger toys dude oh my god okay. there was just one christmas where like me and my best friend <laughs> both got all the power rangers that we wanted and we called it the power ranger christmas still to this Aww, day whenever power ranger christmas yeah. yeah that sounds like a good christmas song actually we'll have oh, a power dude, ranger christmas <laughs> oh well, my mine, god mine not come Zora. to surprise as anyone knows me, but yeah, I was a big Star Wars kid. Uh, growing up, loved those Star Wars toys, loved that getting that Millennium Falcon for Christmas and all that. But I do get mad at myself because for some reason, I fell in love with a toy line called Mask. Have you guys ever even yes. heard Mask? Yes, I loved Mask, dude. So Mask were these cars that could change into like other vehicles. Like uh, It was like a, a hot rod car, and the doors would fly up, and then it could fly. And the guys oh, all had masks. That sounds and, like a weird concept. Like, that concept is totally original, right? That came before. 
or say Transformers? No. no, it was all that shit was around the same time. But I kicked myself because I turned my back on Star Wars for math. <laughs> oh no! no. Gives, and no one gives a shit about mask anymore, including me. So let's get into tonight's topic, <laughs> and, and let's let's talk more about toys and the devil. Oh, okay, the devil too. Oh. Cool. Woe to you, O Earth and Sea, for the devil sends the beast with wrath, because he knows the time is short. Let him who hath understanding reckon the number of the beast, for it is a human number. Its number is six hundred and (laughs) sixty-six. No, that's not actually. You know, that's not actually Vincent Price that reads that intro. Hmm. Kind of let that uh-huh. They Sad. couldn't afford him. They either they couldn't afford him, or he just wouldn't do it. I don't know. Weird, but uh, yeah, it's a cool that intro. That sounds anyway. like it'd be the, the same. The same reason. Probably, but <laughs> but you know what are we talking about? I'm, we're, I'm trying to talk about toys, and all of a sudden I'm talking about the devil, Be- Beazle Bob himself. <laughs> Good old Beazle Bob. <laughs> Sir let me, Bob. Yeah, let, me no. let me tell you what's going on, all right? The 1980s was a period known as the Satanic Panic. Christian groups across the country feared that Satanism was rampant and that children were being indoctrinated mainly through heavy metal music. I personally can be remembered uh, being taken to an event where a Christian documentary called Hell's Bells was played. This documentary delved into the, the Satanic nature of heavy metal and tried to prove that through many examples of back masking or hidden messages and popular songs that when played backwards have an evil or satanic message. You guys ever heard of Hell's Bells? Yes, several yeah. times. Not the Outside song. Outside of ACDC? Yes, it was a it was a Christian documentary that like it like toured the country and would play in these weird places, but it they just told you how the country? <laughs> yeah, it was like a touring like we're going to get into that tonight cuz the guy we're talking about kind of does the same thing, but let me get into it. Well, tonight we will be touching on an aspect of the satanic panic that isn't talked about much and that is the work of a man named Phil Phillips in his book Turmoil in the Toy Box. A book that explains to parents how toys and cartoons of the time were loaded with occult imagery and references for the purpose of indoctrinating children into worshiping the Dark Lord Satan. And as much as I love to read, I have the book right here. We will mostly be talking about a television appearance by Phil Phillips on a show called, well, just hear it for yourself. Eagle's Food. (laughs) From the Eagle's Nest. With Gary Greenwald. (laughs) This unique program combines the dynamic ministry of God's Word, the discussion of contemporary issues, and the demonstration of God's power. Now, here's Gary Greenwald. Well, 
hello, everyone. This is Gary. Okay, that's not Gary Groom. Wow, well, <laughs> I was going to say, that guy sounds a lot like Russ. So this is from a show called Eagle's Food from the Eagle's Nest. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Strange. Strange to start off, Eagle's Nest, uh, I learned from uh, uh, maybe kind of friend of the show, Sky. Uh, Eagle's Nest, do you guys, do you guys, does that sound familiar to you at all? No. Not at all. uh, That was, that wasn't that Hitler's house? (laughs) Oh! I don't don't know. I I don't look too much into his residence. I try not to think about him. Uh, I got this, shout out to the, shout out to the Kive cast, but, uh, yeah, Eagle's Nest, I believe, is the name of Hitler's house. And but this is the show called Eagle's Food. And that was a very dramatic intro. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. I was wondering what the hell it was talking about. Well, we're gonna find out. So let's hear more from Gary Greenwald. Here he is. Hello, I'm Gary Greenwald, and over the past several years, the Eagle's Nest Ministries has exposed certain things like rock and roll music. Dungeons and Dragons, marijuana, (laughs) and even the New Age movement. And now we feel there's another attack upon our society. If I say something like wicked witches and demon clouds and spell books and even the zone of eternal evil, what comes to mind? (laughs) What do you think of? Do you think of a coven of witches or a seance? Watch now. Wicked witches, demon clouds? Where do we start, Mr. Van Gogh? You start by getting that spell book before those foolish witches destroy the world. We've got some witches to splat. You coming with us, Mr. V? I'm afraid I cannot. Like we're not into witches either, sir. We'll stick with you. (laughs) If you wish, I'm going to hunt down that demon mist in the zone of eternal evil where the darkest spirits are trapped. (laughs) Ruh-roh. Wow. (laughs) ruh that's pretty dark. Oh, yeah, about Hanna Barbera could get Vincent Price. They did. That was uh, the Thirteen Ghosts of Scooby Doo, and that was Vincent Price on that special as Vincent Von Gogh. Yeah, they could totally afford him. He's a great guy because he knows which which shows to actually go on and and give himself to. He kind of looks like Doctor Strange in that episode he too. Totally does. He does. He looks a lot. And oh, he... I thought he looked like that all the time. Like no, seriously, he, honestly, I really did. Yeah, you're not far off, Drea. Oh, good. If, he, if Vincent Price was alive now, he would be Doctor Strange's dad. So, <laughs> oh, dad, Daddy Strange. Now, <laughs> now, what, what is this? This is a Christian show, and they're talking about Satan, and they should start watching Scooby Doo. And I'm going to say, <laughs> they watch really long clips of this cartoon, so we can't play all that. But after, after his, he gets his Scooby Doo fix in. He introduces today's guest, Phil. Phillips. That's a great name. No, you've been watching a Scooby-Doo cartoon, and it's amazing to me to see what's being brought forth in a cartoon. We've seen spell books, occultic amulets, we saw a crystal ball, astral projection to the evil zone, all of this in a <laughs> children's cartoon. Now, I've got a guest today. His name is Phil Phillips. He's from Texas. He has been involved in missions work in his life, and he has now felt called to study the effects of cartoons and children's toys and even TV programs upon our children today. And I'd like to introduce a young man, and uh, Phil, uh, God bless you, and it's good to see you today. It's a pleasure being here today. Now, Phil, I'll tell you what, 14 years ago, Scooby-Doo was a lot different than what we see today. And I could hardly recognize it. Can you tell me what's going on in this cartoon? Yes, there's a vast movement toward the occult within the cartoon and toy industry. Most people don't realize that 80% of all cartoons deal directly with the occult. And 40% of the toys on the market have occultic influence. And these are the most popular. Wow, coming in with the hard numbers off the bat. Like, (laughs) 80%? (laughs) It's nuts. Cartoons, by the way. to, To give a visual... Gary Greenwald, the host, he looks like he's like a seventies guy. He looks like like a skinny younger Ron Jeremy. Yeah, he's got and, a porn oh, stash. Just, oh if no! If you imagine blue or, like blue oyster cult, that's no. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ew. And the guy Phil Phillips, um, he's straight up Eric Trump. He he <laughs> he might be a time traveling another Trump. This could be Eric Trump. He looks so much like him, down to the hair, the face. I don't think I've ever heard Eric Trump talk. I don't think – because this guy talks really weird. But, yeah, that's 
That's the visual we say. So let's see what Phil has.